Hi, my name is Aaron Allak and today I would like to present you my work on consistent covariance pre-integration for invariant filters with delayed measurements. I'm from the University of Klagenfurt from the Control of Network Systems group and my co-authors are Alessandro Fornesi and Stefan Weiss. We work in the field of multi-sensor fusion where we try to estimate the state of ground robots. We use the wheel odometry for the state dynamics and we use relative pose and landmarks for system updates. The sensor output is given different rates with unknown delays and also the robots have uncertain initial headings. We do the sensor fusion with a filtering framework. In our system we also have a high rate sensor for the odometry which we use for the propagation that generates a lot of measurements ZT. From time to time out of sequence measurements arrive that you can see on the bottom picture, which are the dark triangles. These measurements trigger a whole cascade of recalculations. This poses a problem for filter-based sensor fusion, as the recalculations cause large overhead, especially due to the covariance repropagation that needs to be done for every propagation measurement that t, p equals f, p, f transpose plus q. The solution that we propose to reduce the computational complexity is called scattering theory. It is found in mathematics and physics, where it describes the scattering of waves and particles. But it also has a nice analogy to linear least squares estimation. It can be applied to concatenate time and measurement updates in form of media. And then the state estimates are just waves that travel through these media. And by concatenating these media, transfer functions can be constructed and efficient computations can be done. So we can combine many measurements into one matrix, but not only propagation measurements, also update measurements. So a mix of measurements can be combined into one single matrix. Also, we can change the initial conditions of a sensor fusion problem by just one simple matrix pre-multiplication. We showed the benefits of the scattering theory for covariance pre-integration in the IRIS 2019 in our previous work. This is just a brief overview of the results of our previous work. Here we analyze the effects of covariance pre-integration for one delayed sensor. We have propagations at 100 Hz and a delay of 200 milliseconds. In blue, it is a normal reference implementation of an EKF is shown, and in red, the star product EKF of our previous work is shown. As you can see, the covariance computations, which are the just the light blue arrow, are decreased to just 10% of what it was before. This comes as a cost of just increased overhead of 12.5% during the regular propagation steps. The reason for these very efficient pre-computations is the main assumption that relinearization after the application of delayed measurements has just small effect on the performance and consistency. The goal of this work now is to propose an approach for covariance pre-integration that maintains the performance but improves the consistency by combining the scattering theory and also the invariant extended Kalman filter. As a use case, we present initial motion estimation with badly initialized estimators. In this way, the linearization points are wrong and the SPEKF further deteriorates the performance and the consistency of the estimates. In the first step, we want to recap the previous theory. So the scattering theory is applicable to linear state space models. So if we have nonlinear functions, we first expand them to have a linear state space model. And then we can use the system matrices in a structure called the star product. With this star product, we can concatenate many propagations and updates into one structure. And this is done with the help of generators. So there are generators for updates and there are generators for the propagation. And the factorization is similar to the update and propagation routine for uh, filter-based estimators. 
On the bottom you can see a scattering matrix built up of different generators that correspond to uh, the measurements ZI until ZN. The scattering matrix can now be used to apply all measurements at once for one initial covariance PI to get the outcome of the center fusion problem with this initial condition PI. In this work we show that the SPEKF has inconsistencies and that they come from the state dependency of the Jacobians of the EKF based approach. When the nonlinear functions are linearized, usually for the EKF formalism, the system matrices are dependent on the state estimate. And the generators themselves in turn are depending on the system matrices. And as a final result, the scattering matrix is also depending on the state estimates. This causes a covariance pre-integration to be depending on good linearization points. Now the IEKF provides Jacobians that are constant and state independent. The requirement is that we work with group affine systems with left or right invariant observations. But this is not very restrictive. As an example, we can say wheeled robots with a 6 degree of freedom pose velocity GPS position or magnetometer measurements all fulfill this requirement, also known landmarks, which we use in this work. This independence of linearization points comes with very strong properties. For example, we have guaranteed filter stability. This means that the estimation error will go to zero. We also have the preservation of the observability of the system. So we don't get inconsistencies due to uh, false observabilities. We also have reachability. For example, if we move with an unknown heading for 5 meters and we finally get global information, the update is correcting the pose on a circle and not on a linear basis. The EUKF formalism is also beneficial for the covariance pre-integration and its consistency. The system that we are looking at are ground robots with an unknown initial heading navigating in 2D. We propagate with the wheel odometry and we update with relative poses. To perform the relative pose updates we use stochastic cloning. During this period we don't have global pose information. This means that the linearization points are wrong, as you can see in the image at the bottom. With the wrong initial heading we start out and build our pre-computations on wrong state estimates. But this does not affect the IEKF based but this does not affect the IEKF based covariance pre-integration because as you can see the Jacobians F and H are state independent. Whereas for the EKF based case we have state dependency in the F and H Jacobian. We tested our algorithm in simulation and with real data. In simulation, the wheeled robots follow the red trajectory. We have done 100 runs in Monte Carlo simulation. The initial heading is wrong. And in the middle of the trajectory at point B, the arrow indicates it. Delayed measurements arrive for a segment in the past, which is also indicated by an arrow. The known landmarks give global position information at the point A. Now all measurements between points A and B need to be reprocessed, either by reapplying all measurements, to, and this is then recalculation, or we do covariance pre-integration based on either the EKF formalism or the IEKF formalism. The recalculation is the least efficient, but will give the best results in terms of accuracy and the consistency. We use the following metrics to judge on the accuracy and the consistency. First of all, the average normalized estimation error squared, the ANES, is an indicator of the consistency. The delta ANES is just a difference of the ANES of the recalculation to the covariance pre-integration. Since we consider the recalculation to be the best, any deviation 
of the ANES from the value of the recalculation is considered to be suboptimal. For the accuracy, we use the root mean squared error. In simulation, we found that all estimators are comparably accurate. To analyze the effects of the covariance pre-integration, we use the delta A and ES. For small initial heading errors, there are almost no effects on the consistency. But as the initial heading errors grow, EKF-based covariance pre-integration rapidly gets inconsistent, while the IEKF-based one just remains consistent. And I would like to note that the scale on the y-axis is logarithmic. Furthermore, the ANES for an initial heading error of 7 degrees is shown on the bottom graph. As you can see, for the IEKF-based covariance pre-integration, there is almost no difference. We also analyze the consistency for longer trajectories where we receive multiple global updates and we start out with a 10 degree wrong initial heading. We found that the EKF-based covariance pre-integration needs four global updates to become consistent again. While the computations based on the IEKF stay consistent the whole time. And even if we use the consistent estimate of the IEKF as a starting point for the EKF-based computations, the wrong linearization points in the covariance pre-integration of the EKF still cause large inconsistency spikes after their application. Instead, if we use just recalculation for the EKF with a consistent estimate of the IEKF, these spikes disappear indicating that the inconsistencies are caused by the wrong linearization points in the covariance pre-integration with the scattering matrices that the EKF built with wrong linearization points. We also evaluated our algorithm with real data. For that, we used the UTIS multi-robot cooperative localization and mapping data set. And again, the IEKF-based approach outperforms the EKF-based one in terms of accuracy and consistency. You can see on the top plot the error in the trajectory and in the bottom plot the error in the consistency, which is described with the NES. A small note, sometimes the value of the NES is zero for some time frames. This has to do with the one step computation with the covariance pre-integration from, for example, 400 until 700. There are no intermediate values when you do covariance pre-integration. It takes you directly from one time step to the target time step. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the scattering pigs.